Hello again. Several people in comments here lately have asked me about the idea that the British invented concentration camps in the Boer War at the beginning of the 20th century. So in other words, that the British, not the Germans, were really responsible for the idea of the concentration camp. It's not entirely true, um, but there is some truth in it. Before we go any further, I want to think a little bit bit about concentration camps and the difference between concentration camps and death camps like Auschwitz and Treblinka, which the Germans set up in Poland. Concentration camps aren't really designed to kill people or even to be brutal or mistreat them. They're really camps or places where we gather together people not for what they've done, but for who they are. For example, we might gather together um, Jehovah's Witnesses because we don't like them or we might gather together German people living in Britain and put them all in one place because we don't like them and don't trust them. Yeah, so that's a different thing entirely. Uh, the Germans had concentration camps in their own country, places like Dachau and uh, Belsen, but they weren't death camps. They were places where the Germans put, uh, the Nazis more precisely, put people who disagreed with their ideology so they were locked up there, not because they'd done anything, but simply because of who they were, their religion, ethnicity, political views, and so on. That's what the British concentration camps were. They gathered together a lot of civilians who hadn't actually done anything, but they were Boers. They were the um, Dutch settlers in South Africa. The British wanted to keep them there. It's important to make that distinction because when people talk about the British concentration camps uh, in the Boer War, it sometimes conjures up visions of Auschwitz, which is really very misleading. The Boer War, I mean, most people don't really understand what it was about now. It's really simple. It's like most wars, it was a money squabble. The British had a presence in South Africa and there were two independent Dutch republics, the Boers, the descendants of Dutch settlers, and they just wanted to be left alone. They had two um, states, the Transvaal and the Orange Free State. Unfortunately, golden diamonds were discovered in great abundance in South Africa at the end of the 19th century, and the British wanted to get their hands on them. And the result, of course, was a war uh, between 1899 and 1902, the Second Boer War. And it's during that war the concentration camps were essentially um, first used by the British. It was the British who first used the expression concentration camp, but the idea originated a few years before the Boer War. In 1896, the Spanish were trying to suppress a revolt on the island of Cuba, which was at that time a Spanish uh, possession. And what they discovered was they had a lot of trouble from guerrilla fighters, people who would um, make hit and run attacks against the Spanish troops and then retreat back to their homes. So the Spanish army hit upon the idea of taking people out of their homes, destroying their homes, and making them all live together in special enclosures, special stockades. They called them the reconcentrados, um, which is similar to concentration camps, but at any rate, the civil population were herded into camps. And this was really the, the uh, what gave the British the idea of using the same technique against the Boer guerrilla fighters. To begin with, the Boer War was a regular war between the Dutch forces and the British, and it wasn't very hard to defeat the Dutch forces. The British had a very, very strong army, so it, they knocked the Boer forces for six very quickly. And after a year, it was thought that the war was over. But the Boers then resorted to guerrilla warfare. In other words, these were, were regular attacks. These were raids, hit and run attacks and the British found it impossible to deal with them because as soon as the Boer farmers had finished attacking their British column, they would simply go home, carry on tending their farms. Lord Kitchener was put in charge. I'm sure we all know Lord Kitchener from the First World War, his famous recruiting poster, you know, your country wants you. Lord Kitchener was put in charge of defeating the guerrilla war and he said 
quite likely that every Boer farm was a supply depot and an intelligence agency. And it struck him that if he could simply destroy the Boer farms, kill all the livestock, destroy the crops, and then take the Boer women and children and keep them in special camps, then he could adopt, this would be like a scorched earth policy. The Boer fighters, the um, husbands of the women and children, would have no food, they'd have no shelter, they'd have nobody to tell them what the British were up to. And that's what he did. He set up, ultimately, 35 concentration camps in which all the women and children from the uh, Boer states were herded and kept under guard. The majority of the people were children for obvious reasons, because of course each uh, Boer wife had a number of children. Uh, in the end there were over 110,000 captives in those camps, all women and children. And this is what they look like. You can see the accommodation is spartan or primitive, but these aren't what we think of as concentration camps, you know, barbed wire enclosures and so on. Some of the women and children in the camps were the families of husbands who had surrendered to the British and were being held separately. Others were the families of men still fighting in the field. And what the British did, supplies were limited, you know, rations. They decided to give extra rations to the families of those men who had surrendered as a reward. And that meant, of course, that the families, the wives and the children of those who hadn't surrendered, got more meagre rations, which led to them being starved. They were living on the edge of starvation. The expression concentration camp was first used in Parliament on the 5th of March 1901. Uh, I'm quoting here from uh, one of my books which um, covers this subject. C.P. Scott, the MP for Lee, rose to ask the Secretary of State for War a question about the rations provided for the inmates of the camps. He said, I beg to ask the Secretary of State for War if he can now state that the wives and children of Boers in the field are placed on precisely the same rations in the concentration camps as other women and children. And as far as we know, that's the very first time that the expression concentration camp was ever used. Of course, the British Army had no experience of looking after tens of thousands of civilians in this way. They had simply no, no facilities, they had no equipment, there were no cooking utensils, no pots, no soap, nothing at all. They simply set up tents and people were expected to live in them and then survive on the rations they were given. There were no supplies of fresh water, water had to be fetched from lakes or streams. The provision of latrines was simply ditches um, dug near, near the camps which meant the raw sewage leaked out and contaminated the water supply, which inevitably led to outbreaks of dysentery and typhoid. These epidemics were what killed an awful number, very, very large number of the Boer women and children in the camps. It wasn't a deliberate policy, it's just what happens when you have um, contaminated water and people crowded together like that on inadequate rations. The water couldn't be boiled, there were no pots to boil it. So conditions in the camp were really, really filthy. It wasn't just typhoid and dysentery, there were epidemics of measles, pneumonia and so on. The majority of the population, as I say, were children. And they were starving and living in very unhygienic conditions and they died like flies. The uh, picture that we had at the beginning of this episode was of Lizzie Van Zyl who died at the age of seven. And if we look at it again now, we can see it's indistinguishable from the sort of photographs that were taken of the inmates of camps like Belson after the Second World War. There was huge indignation across the whole of Europe and America about the um, British actions during the Boer War. Cartoons, satirical drawings, uh, all published. Here's a drawing from a magazine which shows the supposed conditions in the camps at that time. 
the number of women and children who died was simply unbelievable. Um, I'll quote again, if I may, from my book on this subject. Uh, where are we now? Yeah. In August 1901, 2,666 people died in the camps. Then in October, 3,205. This works out a death rate of about 350 a year, um, 350 per thousand a year, which means that if it carried on at that rate, roughly a third of the people in these camps would have died in the course of a year. Uh, luckily, things got a little bit better. But even so, by the end, there were 110,000 people in the British camps, 110,000 white people, I'll come to the blacks in a minute. By the time that peace came in 1902, 26,251 women and children had died in them. In other words, in about a quarter of those held in the camps had died of disease and malnutrition. To put it in perspective, there were only 148,000 Boers in the Transvaal and 71,000 in the Orange Free State. Since about a quarter of those held in the camps died, that means that 15% of the entire Boer population died in those camps and it might give you some idea of why the Boer South Africans now aren't dreadfully keen on the British obviously. Blacks were held in separate camps chiefly because the British wanted to use them as a labour force so they took the men as well. In the black camps there were 38,000 people altogether of whom 14,154 died so in the black concentration camps, about a third of them died. Something else um, I just want to touch upon before we finish. <clears throat> it's been suggested that this was a policy of genocide. <clears throat> and the word genocide is thrown around very freely now. People talk about the British genocide in Africa, the slavery is ge uh, genocide. It's a word that everyone uses and no one really knows what it means. I want to use the um, definition adopted by the United Nations in 1948 for genocide, which says that genocide is any of the following acts committed with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnic, racial or religious group as such. And it goes on to list various uh, means of committing genocide. One of them is deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or part. By that definition, I think most people would agree that Lord Kitchener's actions in setting up the concentration camps and herding people into them did constitute genocide. 